we look at like the benefits and the consequences of being on camera, not being on camera, the people that you need to reach that need you, it's your moral obligation, you're doing a disservice to them if you don't, like all of those motivating, empowering things. Um, but also just remembering like, this camera is a piece of metal and plastic, you're not, a, you're not afraid of it, you're afraid of judgment, you're afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone, but also realizing like what you're committing to, you're committing to entrepreneurship, you're committing to reaching your audience. Yo, what's up, everybody? On this episode, we're going to go over a lot of stuff. Marley, Oh, got a, you've got a lot of explaining to do. Oh, okay. I do. I, I know. <laughs> I just have some questions. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I was trying to be dramatic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but the title of this episode is, uh, I, I just thought of this word. I don't know if you used it before, but omnipresent entrepreneurship. I've heard of it. Yeah. I literally, I was just copywriting and and what it means. I was looking at the definition of omnipresence. Do you know what it is? Like being everywhere? The I see you everywhere effect? The dictionary.com version's better. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's the state of being widespread or constantly encountered. Constantly encountered. That's interesting. Yeah, because encounter is just like there's levels to it, you know? There is. Yeah, like different um, levels of intimacy in, in an encounter too. So, Yeah, so um, just so like a lot of stuff I want to cover is just be, behind the scenes of what you do. Um, because it's been a, and also it's been a while I know. since we've talked. Do you remember when we first spoke? Well, no, or like, the interview, interview, not spoke. Uh, the last time, like it's got to be over a year. Like for the last interview, like you and I have talked on. Fox That's un it's unacceptable that you do not know the day. Um, I'm just. I, <laughs> it's I'll actually journal. I probably journaled about it today. I talked to Daxi. The next day, I haven't talked to Daxi. I mean, it, it went many viral. It got two thousand views. Come on. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was actually September 17th, 2018. Okay. So almost two years. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, for a lot of people who don't know, uh, we can just dive in here. I, I think we have a lot of similarities, uh, you and me. Yeah. Uh, they involve content, but it's cool because we're, we come from a different world. Yeah. Like you've emphasized and focused on the YouTube world. I've kind of started to emphasize in the podcast mm -hmm. world. Um, but you know, we're same people, right? We're people, people. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm sure everyone knows who you are already, but uh, we can just talk about your basics, like your age. Yeah, like, what's uh, that? that's like the first question you should ask. Yeah, like what's just okay. basic stuff? We'll cover that. Uh, well, I turned 30 in November, so it's going to be a big party. Nice. Hopefully. That's cool. What uh, in November? Oh, me too. Yeah. Not 30, but November. Oh. I, I turn at age. So you're um, a Scorpio too? Yeah. <laughs> we, did, we, never, I we do have so much in common. Yeah. Scorpios are, my best friends are Scorpios, so. It all makes sense. Hello? Why I laugh at your jokes. So, uh, <laughs> I laugh at your jokes. But so right now you're you're you live in Boise, right? You you were in Canada. I, I moved. I jumped the border at the beginning of quarantine, and I moved to Boise. What's Boise like? I love it. It's nice. It's the weather is great. It's a it's a lot different than Canada. People make fun of my accent all the time, and I feel like I don't have an accent, but people say I do. Yeah, they don't, Boiseans don't have an accent, I'm sure, right? No. Yeah, we have a lot of friends there, and it's actually like a, a tech community there, right? Like yeah, of, people have said it's like the next Silicon Valley. Because everyone's leaving California because it's just burning, right? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, Gabe, you know, you know, Gabe, he was, uh, he was showing me like photos. It's like, <sighs> all, like the sky was like red in it. It was like middle of the day. Oh, no. Yeah, I've seen the picture. Josh Forty posted a bunch of stuff too, and I was like, I had no idea. Yeah, so I guess I should ask you some questions. Let's um, do it. Uh, let, let's get this out of the way because I think it's pretty important. Um, how does it feel having a best friend that's viral on TikTok and she's a mom? Uh, and she's not under 18. I'm proud of her. Okay. <laughs> when's the last... <laughs> oh, we're talking about Rachel Peterson, by the way. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you talked to her? Oh, uh, it's been a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That was the best question I had. So uh, what was the first piece of content you've ever created? Ever? Uh, yeah, you can remember that you... I were... guess like the, the hand turkey on Thanksgiving for my parents when I was like five. You know, when you like... Same. You like, yeah, right? I feel like everyone can say that. Yeah, the hand paintings. Those are the classics. Hand, and, it, and it's a turkey. And then you like have the turkey, but it's your hand, you know? Yeah. On yeah. YouTube... That's not what it is, though. 
That's not, no. One of my first videos, well, I also have a channel before I started that channel. Um, so yeah, my, you probably know the answer. I feel like one of my first YouTube videos was, did you know Instagram does this? Or it was um, how to uh, not treat your social media like... A, you had an um, alter ego. Yeah, the alter ego one where I wore a mustache, right? Damn it. I was going to show that yeah. later. Damn it. All right, whatever. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> um, so yeah, I think another... So being an entrepreneur, you're obviously omnipresent. You walk the talk. You're you're everywhere. Um mm -hmm. I think another common skill or or thing we share is uh I think it's important is like knowing how to network or mm -hmm. just you know relate with people. Um could you talk about that? Like what's your philosophy behind like you know networking, building relationships with you know clients, businesses, etc.? Because I think that's important for people to know how to do. I think it's an important thing that people need to do if they want to be omnipresent, like just yeah. having that personality. So like what's your philosophy behind that? leveraging relationships, learning from relationships, being connected through relationships. Like, yeah, networking is, you know, you get to know other people and they might have a connection for you. You might hear something from them, like just that one soundbite or that one thing that just changes everything. I'm, I'm very much a quotes person. I quote Alex Sharfin like all day. I didn't realize yeah. how many Alex Sharfin quotes that I, I share. I was doing a podcast episode with him once and I quote it all the time. And he's like, Marley, you like, I could be the Alex Sharfin replacement if it ever came down to it. I just really, I know a lot of his content. Um, but I, I think that having those relationships also, you know, it's not just about the networking of who you can be introduced to for business. For me, it's also what I learn from people. Um, I, I want to learn their life story and see what I can take away from that to apply to mine. Like you learn from your own mistakes, but you can also learn from other people's mistakes and growth. Um, and you and I, we met at, where did we meet for the first time? Was it like Offermind or OfferLab or something? Uh, oh no, you're putting me on the spot. Uh -oh. um, why don't you know this, Taxi? <laughs> you, Cause you teased me before. I'm just going to tease you back. No, no, no. It, it was uh dream 100. What, what was it? Was it? The first one? Maybe. Well, maybe like not our first like virtual right. interaction. Okay. So I want to talk about something you did recently. That's kind of goes in, I think you're, you have an interesting humor in content, which I don't think a lot of people don't do with their content. They don't have humor. Can you talk about that? Like how you add humor to your content? Yeah, I, I think I'm funny. So I want to create content that I think is funny. Like I, it's debatable. I it's totally debatable, but I laugh at my own jokes and that's what matters. If you want to laugh with me, that's great. And even like when I was first at the beginning of my career as social media manager, I wanted to create content that I would enjoy. If I was bored by it, I was like, what's the point? So I would try to find the humor or the emotion in every piece of content. I just want to create something that makes people laugh. When I was a dental hygienist, I didn't realize this at the time, but I was like split testing content with my patients because they would like, I'd have one patient in the morning and I tell them a story about like my weekend or whatever. And then the next patient, I would tell them the same story, but I would like tweak it to try to make them laugh harder. And by the end of the day, I had a killer story. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, you recently did a piece of content that you improv. Did you improvise it? Like someone even just commented, Robert. He said, "Uh, the Marley, bro, Russell Brunson song kind of went in." Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, the best part was Christy. She was just. Oh like, my god. Well, I, I'm, that's debatable. I think everyone thought that Alex was the best part. Oh, yeah. Alex. Yeah, actually, I was like, he had the same kind of dance moves. I was like, I mean, at least do some spins or something. But it was it was yeah, he just kind of like bobbed along and then waved once in a while and then pointed. Yeah. It's a, it's a Bobby like, song. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a bobbing song for sure. Yeah. So that piece of content, like what's behind the scenes? Like, did you plan it? Did you think about it? Or you were just together and you're like, hey, like, I want to dream 100 Russell. I'm going to record this. I mean, like, yeah. I'm well, I, make the song. I first I was like, I wonder if I could ask Russell to speak at my event. Like, what are the chances? And I was like, well, you don't know unless you try. You may as well ask. But I was like, Russell isn't the kind of person that you just vox and ask and be like, hey, can you speak at my event? Like, it, it there has to be like a proposal. And um, so I was thinking about like, what would be a really entertaining way to do that? Uh, and the, the first idea was the rap. I actually thought of the rap first, which is what I posted today. But um, the ukulele song was easier to write and perform. And I had a ukulele. So I was like, okay, I'll just learn how to... Like, I, I got a ukulele at the beginning of quarantine. And I thought I would learn how to play it. Well, it just sat around until last week. I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to play this. But another thing about me is, although I am musical, I also like to have long nails. I can play the piano with long nails, but I can't play the ukulele with long nails. So that didn't work. So then I was like, dang it. I wrote this song based on... Um, 
the same lyrics as I'm, or the same uh, tune as I'm yours. There's a lot of ukulele songs that have the same, like the Jason Mraz song. Um, and so I was like, Hey, I'm just going to do it to this melody and I'm going to write the lyrics to this. Well, I can't play the ukulele. So I was like, who can, I know someone that can play the ukulele and conveniently he is also speaking in this event. So I was like, I can get Steve Larson. And at first I thought I would just have him write the, like do the track for me. Like just, and then I would just sing it to the music. But then he's like, what if I did it in the video with you? And then that gave us the idea of, well, then like Christy is also in Boise. Let's get her to do it. And then I was like, Alex, let's get him on the iPad. So that's kind of how it all came together. So, I mean, your music career, it's taking off. Like Take what's off. the next steps? Like how, like when are you going to start touring? Like when's your next single? Like, let us know. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that by the time the whole quarantine thing clears up, I'll be on a 50 state tour. Boom. Content Machine Live. There yeah. we go. <laughs> um, okay. So like who are, I guess, go, going back to creating content, um, I guess w- one thing I want to touch upon is stories. Like, I mm-hmm. think you're really good at Instagram stories and your consistency and like, um, which is important, right? For, I think people to do if they have a personal brand online is to be kind of consistent with just showing other parts of their life. Uh, that's how you separate yourself, right? Like, mm-hmm. so like, how do you go about that? Like, where do you d- decide, like in your head, are you like a thousand times a day? Like, would this be a good story or that like, how do you like, what's your process? I think I'm just, I, it's documenting. It's just whatever comes up that day or a thought that pops into my mind that I'm like, can I share this? Can I, is this something that we, and like and some, over time you just get a better taste and like you can. Yeah. And it's, I feel like it's just testing my material the way that like a stand up comedian would. It's like, well, I'm going to see if this sticks. And the weirdest things that I never expected would be popular sticks. Like, a few months ago, I had to take care of my friend's chickens when she went out of town. And then Those and I, great, like, by the way. I know I give these motivational speeches to chickens in the morning. And now people all the time are like, where's the chickens? And I was like, gosh, I didn't mean for this to be a pillar of my content. But then what like, people don't know is that even if there wasn't social media, Marley would still probably do that. So. Oh, yeah. Before, <laughs> like I used to vlog my weekends in high school with my friends before vlogging was a thing before YouTube was I don't know, before I knew about YouTube. Like recording? Yeah, like, like mentally. Like, no, no, I would have like a video camera and I would film our adventures on the weekends. And then on Sunday night, I would put together like a recap video of what, of what my friends did that weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. So that leads us into our next segment uh, of the show. Uh, that was terrible. No. <laughs> uh, and it, and I, I, I need like a good transition. This is pretty scuffed. Uh, <laughs> but it's called, Do You Remember That Piece of Content? And what do you rem- remember about it? It's a okay. long segment name. I want to talk about, uh, actually, when it comes to omnipresence, is there any like people that come to, what's actually, what's, I have ADD. So omnipresence, like who are some people you think are doing a good job of like being encountered everywhere? Um, I encountered everywhere. Uh, Catherine Jones. I see her everywhere and I love her content. She's so fun. Like just the way that she talks is so funny. She's like, yeah, she's like a, she, she, she's like a, I feel like she would be a big YouTuber. She could, yeah. Well, she does almost like a female Casey Neistat. Oh, that is like the best compliment. I hope you tell her that to her face or we'll tag her and say, hey, come in at 23 minutes and 10 seconds. Best compliment ever at Catherine Jones. Uh, Okay. So back back to the questions. Uh, Okay. Camera. Let's talk about cameras because those are are important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for content like so what would you recommend to people who even if they don't ask this question to themselves i'm sure people feel uncomfortable in front of the camera even if they aren't cognizant of it yeah even me like when i have to take photos or something it just it's different i feel like i'm more judgmental or i'm more like perfection the perfectionist side of me comes out yeah um almost like i feel like i'm a model it feels bad Uh, i don't want to be a model um so like what would you recommend to people like who are conscious of being on camera and like, don't feel comfortable on camera. Like, yeah. Get over it. No, (laughs) Um, it's, I mean, it's, we look at like the benefits and the consequences of being on camera, not being on camera, the people that you need to reach that need you. It's your moral obligation. You're doing a disservice to them. If you don't like all of those motivating, empowering things. Um, But also just remembering like this camera is a piece of metal and plastic. You're not, you're not afraid of it. You're afraid of judgment. You're afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone, but also realizing like what you're committing to 
you're committing to entrepreneurship, you're committing to reaching your audience. Um, but then I also teach this, um, I have an underground charisma formula that I teach. And one of the examples that I give is Beyonce. Like when Beyonce is, is on stage, I'll, some people might know this, some people might not that they she has this alter ego that she's created she is sasha fierce so before she steps on stage she transforms into this fierce female personality the one that we see when she's like giving it her all on stage and it's not that i'm telling you to fake it till you make it it's that i'm telling you to be you louder uh to amplify those characteristics and those parts of yourself that you already are um also marilyn monroe had the same had she did this experiment that i i love this story marilyn monroe that's a stage name. Her real name is Norma Jean Baker. And she could decide when she wanted to be Norma or Marilyn. And she would go into the public and she would do this experiment where she, she'd be like, I can be invisible or I can be Marilyn. And uh, so she would be in like in the middle of Grand Central Station, tons of people around. And she would say, she said to her photographer, do you want to see her? Boom. Just a change of energy, change of body language, maybe like zhuzhes her hair a little bit. And she becomes Marilyn. She gets engulfed by fans who moments earlier didn't even see her. What changed? All she had to do was decide. It's that she stepped into that energy and she like became that persona. Um, so again, it's not fake it till you make it. It's about being you louder and creating those cues, those characteristics that tell you like when it's showtime. Interesting. Yeah. And it's a lot of confidence, you know, not like, you know, just kind of going with it. So actually, I, I'm going to name off. Actually, let's play this game. I'm going to name off social platforms or apps and you have to explain it in one word. Okay. You ready for that? Okay. You're sure. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, all right. First, TikTok. Dance. Yeah. That makes me want to dance. Uh, dance. All right. I'm taking note of this. All right. Uh, Instagram. Uh, comedy. Comedy. Okay. Because I use it for comedy because <laughs> I try to be funny on it. I don't know. All right. Uh, Twitter. Uh, tiny. <laughs> <laughs> just like tiny content. Like the birds tiny or the, oh, it's tiny content. Micro oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's literally like, they literally tell you, you can only write this many words. 140 characters, right? Something like that. Yeah. It's let, it's, until you do twit longer. Uh, mm -hmm. Facebook. Uh, fun. F is for friends. All right. Fun. Community. Fun. Um, Snapchat. Uh, forgotten. <laughs> forgotten. He could have sold to Mark. Oh, man. He messed up. Did, was that opportunity on the table? Yeah, they would have bought him. That's why mm -hmm. they made stories. Just yeah. like now they're making reels because TikTok, like they, if they can't buy the competition, they make the competition. Yeah. So uh, Pinterest. Uh, recipes. Okay. Okay. That's what I use it for. I usually use Google for that. but mm. Or YouTube. Yeah. Um, Twitch. Video games. Yeah, that's that's the, that's, every, that's what every boomer says. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're not a boomer. You're thirty. I'm that, almost. Or where's the boomer I'm, boundary? Like, are I'm where's still in my twenties? Uh, what is the boomer I'm sorry, boundary? You're twenty nine. Yeah. Um, I don't give know. Me, give me a couple more months. Does anybody know what the boomer boundary is? Comment comment if you're a boomer. Comment uh, if you're a boomer. And then, do you know what they call the younger people who aren't millennials? Is it like Gen X, Gen Y? No, it's Zoomers. Oh. Yes, because they're just ADD out the, the. Yeah, I can't say it. Uh, okay, say that makes sense. Like they, their brains have probably evolved to move faster because yeah, because TikTok and technology and just yeah, I, totally. I get that. I don't know. Whatever. I don't I, know. I don't know my human evolution. <laughs> um, all right. So Reddit. Reddit. Oh, um, forum. Okay, that's true. Yeah, forum used to be a big thing. Yeah. And then MySpace came. Um, yeah. MySpace. Ancient. Ancient. <laughs> Vintage. <laughs> Vintage. It's still alive. Is it? Apparently, like, Justin Timberlake bought it for, like, $10 million. No way. Yeah, almost positive. I don't know why. He wanted to that. create his own social network after being in the movie. True. I forgot He's like, about that. I don't own a social network. I just own one on TV now in real life. He was in that movie? Yeah. Okay. He was just... the one that said, you know what's cool? A million dollars? You know what's cooler? A billion? That was his line. Oh, he played the investor guy. Yeah. Uh, the guy from Netscape. Or so, I, 
Some yeah, that one. Okay. All right. Quora. Um uh Q and A. Q and A. These are good one word explanations. I thought I was gonna stump you. Oh gosh. My brain uh, was fast like a zoomer. <laughs> uh podcast. Daxi. Oh my god. I'm the only noun. Your name is syn- synonymous with podcast. Okay. I will say though, there is t- other types of podcasts that I'm not like well versed in. Oh. Like when it comes to audio dramas and stuff, like that's a whole different, uh, like the companies who do that, like Wondery, like where there's like a lot of cinematics happening and sound effects and like it's more fiction based. Wait, the- can we do this? Can we create one? It takes a lot of effort. It sounds effort. like it does. Have you seen like, my They're the most, they're the most, it? that's a huge industry. Like there's oh, people I know. Yeah. The biggest shows like Serial or other one, they're all like storytelling based and they're seasonal based. Amazing. It's almost like you're listening to a book. Oh my God. Um, that's fascinating. But usually those teams, like for Wondery, like a big podcast, like there'll be like eight, 10 people just on one podcast. Huh. Because there's a lot of like how they source the sounds and how they script write. And like a big niche is actually um, like horror. Mm, I bet. Um, audio drama type things. Uh, YouTube. Me. Boom. Me. That's what everyone should think when they think about YouTube. That'd be great. Um, cool. So I, I have a few more questions that we can wrap up. So what's what's uh what's new with YouTube? I see some new stuff happening in YouTube. Um, um mainly like uh, can you shed some light on like I see like stories and then posts, like what's up? Yeah. There's like there's a community tab. There the community tab's been up there for a while where you can make posts, you can make polls, like you can treat it like the same way that you make content on your Facebook page or your Facebook group. So that's that's available to you. You can be teasing your audience about videos coming out or asking them what kind of content they want to see next, having conversations with them somewhere outside of just the comments in a video. So there's that. Um, and then, yeah, there's stories and you can also, I mean, you, you can, you've been able to do YouTube lives and stuff for a while. Um, but I've, I haven't tried the YouTube stories. I've seen YouTube stories. I've watched them, but I haven't tried it out myself. Yet. Is it like your story can be shown? And like, cause I don't like, is it only people you're subscribed to or is it going to be like, the, like recommended stories? Yeah. There's recommended, like I'm, I've been watching a lot of Hamilton and I get a lot of Hamilton stories. Are they good? Yeah. If you like Hamilton. Yeah. Do the lives go to stories too? I feel like that's, I've seen that. I don't think so. Not that I've seen. Okay. Um, uh... So what's up? What else? Is new? <laughs> I, I don't know about the news. <laughs> what else is new with YouTube? Like anything else coming? Um, I think that's that's the big stuff. I think a lot of uh, celebrities went to YouTube when quarantine happened so that they could create more content, connect with their audiences. So that's kind of yeah. fun. Like I know like uh, Charlie D- D'Amelio is on YouTube now and she's kind of blowing up. Okay. You know, the TikTok girl. Okay. Um, I saw JLo. JLo got YouTube. She's been doing some vlogs. J-Lo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alex Rodriguez, like, they, he started one and... Yeah. yeah. So fun. J-Lo used to actually be my crush in middle school. Oh, I can see why. The more you know. The more so, you know. Uh, okay, so those are all my questions. You passed. I didn't know it was a test. I'm so glad I passed. passed. Yeah, if you would have answered any of them wrong, you would have been... I would have, like... It would have been really been, like, later. It's, it's my... <laughs> Broadcast. No, no, no. no it's just the Daxi show. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for people listening, um, can you really just tell them about what you have going on right now? If they want to follow you, join anything? Yeah, well, the biggest thing that I'm pushing right now, other than asking Russell Brunson to speak at my event, which I just created two really awesome music videos, you can go to my page and and check those it's out. The whole I think album. That. I think that will. That's a lot of pressure, but I'm yeah, up for the never challenge. Mind, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's two music videos up there that are really fun that you guys can check out. But it's to promote also my my event coming up, Content Machine Live, where we're helping you to build a content machine in your business to create reliable, recurring, predictable revenue. Uh, so tickets for that are contentmachinelive.com. And it's happening at the end of this month, September 23rd to 25th. Alex Sharfin, Steve Larson, and Christy Code Red are also speaking. And, great, uh, people, also hoping, great people. Great people. Also hoping for... Uh, for Russell Brunson to say yes. Nice. Uh, contentmachinelive.com? Yeah, that's right. We'll have that in the show notes. And yeah, I appreciate you being on. Um, like I said, you passed. I'm surprised. 
You know, I threw some curveballs at you. I didn't even study. Yeah, you didn't even study. Like, I don't know how you got these. Pop Damn, quiz. I got to put more effort into these. <laughs> um, cool. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>